the half-continent. This land bears the scars of centuries of conflict between monsters and humans. Only the bravest souls now travel the inland ways. The bravest of all are the monster hunters. To be a hunter requires hunting and extraordinary skills. For the monsters are as deadly as they are very. From the giant Ettons, human-sized burgles, knickers, and rivermen, to the tiny and cunning bridges, any could kill a human quicker than thought. But our story doesn't begin in the monster-infested lands of the Ygrimir, or with heroic tales of monster hunters. Our story begins in the town of Washington, a Madame Opera's buried society for foundling boys and girls. Our story begins with Rosamund, boy with a girl's name. I'm gonna thrash you, Rosie Posey. Enough of that, young master Gosling. You know the hundred rules of Horondo. Silence before a fight. Time to eat your scourging, Missy. You've managed to dodge me all week, so you'll suffer extra today. Old Bartholomew can't protect you from me this time. That's enough, Gosling. It's okay. Just remember the rules. Are my hands right? What about my feet? Oh no, here he comes. Crap. Yeah, that felt right. No, dear boy, no! Left to say, then counter-offend with a culix. You've seen it done, you've practiced it, lad. Just step away, then behind. Then jab, jab, jab with the handle. A half-hearted sustus is just not good enough, boy. to be fine. You look terrible. You'll need a dose of Blachette to set you mending. I'll fetch some from Master Crumplin right away. You lie still now. I'll return as soon as I can. I wish I was there to see Master Crumplin work. Red goes with green and makes purple. Blue powdered with yellow makes off-white, with olive spots. Black boiled with white makes vermilion with orange vapors. How wonderful. Pollets and cockerels, boy. Get out me way before I spill this on you and melt you into a puddle. <laughs> Rosamond was alone for quite some time. It had been so long since he had the dormitory all to himself. She had forgotten how weirdly unnerving it was to be in there alone. Such glimpses of the oppressive dark naturally turned his mind to Gosling. Gosling Corvinius Arbor of the Corvinius Arbors. They were a powerful family with ties to some of the most ancient bloodlines in Boschenberg and Branderbras, far to the south. Gosling was notorious at Madame Opera's. He made everyone's life a misery. It was said that his parents had given him up so they could afford a racehorse. Such a pathetic tale of rejection never stopped Gosling from declaring how important he was. He had three names. When Rosamund was found, he had a card with one word, written awkwardly in charcoal, and with that, he was named. His name was officially sealed and he received the family name all foundlings possess. Bookchild. Ugh, not for chat. Now, hold your nose and open your mouth. Better? Uh. Thank you, Miss Freline. They're gone. They're all gone. It's killing everyone. My comrades. My brothers! Every. Last. One. How can we fight something like this? We're screwed! We're all gonna die! Cut the belly aching, soldier. You're part of the Emperor's army. Heraldus, I hate to agree with that swine, but we're outmatched. That Etten is too much for us. Hold your ground. The Slothig will not breach the gates as long as I still draw breath. You're a madman. This is the Slothhog. 
Slaughterer of thousands, smiter of tens of thousands. We can't hold it! It's dragging us around like we're nothing! Just keep pulling! Give us all the time you can! You're a fool, Heraldus. You heard what she said about the beast? I refuse to just be a name on the list like the thousands before me! I... I... I don't want to die! Edward, get back here! Your orders, sir. Those who wish to follow that coward fall back behind the gates. Those who would follow me shall earn your place as heroes. All cannons have spent but one. One last throw of the dice. To me, Emperor's men, stand with me now and win yourself a place in history. <sighs> Live well, comrades. Young Master Rosamund, what rot are you reading? It's one of them awful pamphlets Verlene buys for you, ain't it, me boy? What will Master Pinsome think of me finding you reading these things again? I'm not much for me letters, as you know, me lad, but Master Pinsome has led me to thinking. Reading these here pamphlets will shrivel your mind. Let's just say it is a good thing you're recuperating from the beating that spineless braggart of a child Gosling gave you, else I might have considered confiscating that there folio. <laughs> and what's this one about me, lad? The Great Scold Heraldus, champion of the Empire and savior of Clementine. Ah, all Harold, is it? Slayer of a thousand monsters, the Battle of the Gates, savior of the Imperial Capital. That were a powerful long time ago, bit of ancient history. Wonder how true that version you got there is, though. Why wouldn't it be true? Perhaps because fabrications are easier to sell and more entertaining to read. Perhaps it's a bit of propaganda for the Scolds, so we like them better. Well, I already think the Scolds are amazing. Would you want to be a Scold, Master Franzitart? I wish I was. Or on a ship? As a Vindgrun? Of course. A Scold? One of those dark dabblers making all those dangerous smells and vile potions just waiting to go boom in your face? I be thinking not. Folks need him to keep all men or nasties away, I grant ye, but a Scold will spend his days out in the wild country where only there's cunning chemistry and the cut of their proof had stand between their next meal and a horrible gashing in. I've had perils enough in my life and prefer to spend what's left of it safe in these halls. You'll have dangers aplenty when you go to serve on the main ram in the navy. Skulldun's not for me, lad, or for ye, if you know what's right for ye. Would you rather be a Lazar, then? Of strange people, Lazars were thought to be the strangest, able to do wonderful, terrible things because of the strange and secret surgeries done to their bodies. Some even say they are even better than scolds. There are two types of Lazar. The Fulgur, able to create sparks and bolts of electricity. And the Wit, who could manipulate minds and sense where monsters and even humans were hiding. Nobody really knows where Lazars first came from. Scolds were bizarre, but Lazars could be frightening. Even as frightening, as much as they fought. Abash me, lad. Now I'm certain you're going me. To let a butcher go carving into your gizzards. What's the use of it? Give me a scold over a lazar any day. I've had to share cabin space with a few lazars in my time. You have? What were they like? Did you see the marks on their faces? Did they fight monsters? Aye, I have. Their spores on their foreheads were clear, and I, we fought many knickers. After meeting them, I'm glad to be free of their company. They're strange, and the unnatural organs that make them so strong make them crotchety, feverish. Many a queer thing I've seen, but nothing so wretched as a man made sick by his own organs. Stick to a Venegroon's life. It is a good honest way to fetch your fortune. Well then tell me one of your stories. Of when you were a sailor upon the seas? Tell me about the Battle of the Mole, when you were saved by that white-haired fellow. Or when you fought against the Pirate King of the Brigandine? Nay, nay, me boy, you know most of them already. Especially them their last two. Master Franztart, have you ever killed a monster? <sighs> Aye, lad. 
I have. Look there. A monster blood tattoo. People were only ever marked with a monster blood tattoo if they had fought and slain a monster. The image of the fallen beast was pricked into the skin using the dead monster's own blood. Stuff reacts strangely in skin, festers wildly for a time before leaving its crimson mark. Mr. Franzitart, you're a monster slayer! <sighs> As things be, Rosamond, the creature I killed did not to deserve such an end. Though my shipmates boasted me a hero, it were a cowardly thing I did. How could killing a monster be cowardly? How could Master Franzitart be ashamed of being a hero? To kill a monster was almost the grandest thing. Everyone gave up. Humans were good. Monsters were bad. To feel sympathy and to take pity on a monster would label you a sinner, a monster lover. Shameful crime that would have you shunned, stuck on the pillory for weeks, or worse of all, publicly executed. Not all monsters are monsters, lad. There be things I need to tell you, Rosamond. Strange things. Things that might appear shocking at first, but you need to get your head about them. Not a word of this to anyone. Good evening to you, Dormitory Master Franzitart. Time for another dose of that chat, sweetheart. Master Cromplan has kept it warm, especially for your second dose. I think you're mending nicely, dear. Glory on Cromplan's chemistry. The swelling is definitely going down, but then you have always mended quickly. Aye, Cromplan knows his craft. I reckon though, next time Goslin takes a shy at your noggin, Rosamond, you duck! <laughs> Best sell for the wounds to avoid ever getting one. Aye, Master Franzitart. Good lad. Right, down for supper. That's enough of that. Off you up, Rosamond. What a dear, sensitive boy. Aye, too sensitive and too earnest for his own good. I can't watch out for him forever. The world is shrewd and tough. Whirling away the hours, are we? Preparing to go aboard your precious boats, eh? Fat lot of good reading those has done. Don't think you're better than me, m'lady. You're still here. Nobody wants you. My family will be coming back for me soon, you'll see. Then I'll show you who's better. When Mama and Papa come back, I'll get them to buy this whole stinking place and I'll kick old Francie Fart and the rest of those old fools out to rot in the streets. Or... I'll just burn it down to the cellars. They treat you the same as anyone, and better than you deserve. Ooh, I better stop. Madame Rosie is going to make me eat my nasty little words. Selfish little best. Get! Language, young master. But I'd be lying if I told you I didn't think the same. You've been summoned to Madame Opera's office, lad. Someone very keen to meet you, I'm told. Follow me. I hope I'm not in trouble. The children are only sent here if it's the worst kind of trouble. In there, me boy. And best of luck. You sent for me, Madame Opera? I did, my dear boy. Come closer, come closer. Today is a very important one for you, young Master Rosamond. Mr. Sebastopol here has come as an agent all the way from High Vesting and has declared he would very much like to meet you. Mr. Sebastopol, I would like you to meet young Master Rosamond. Young Master Rosamond, Mr. Sebastopol. Rosamond? What a fine name for, what I am told, a fine lad. It wasn't until Rosamond looked into Sebastopol's eyes, he figured why he felt so uneasy. Sebastopol's eyes were completely the wrong color. The whites, blood red, and his irises were a cold, piercing blue. This man was a leer. Leers are trackers of man and monster alike. They drench their eyes with forbidden chemicals to enable them to see into things, through things, spy on hidden things, and even tell if a person is lying. Paired with a stenicon mask, ears can see, hear, and smell great distances, and even see clearly in the darkest of night. The mask needs to be removed often, but special organs inside to try to graft them to the host, become near impossible to remove. Mr. S Sebastopol? Now, Rosamond, Mr. Sebastopol is here to offer you a chance for employment, an opportunity I understand you very much desire. 
I want you to take his proposal seriously and consider carefully what a fine and generous offer it is. Please go on, sir. Thank you, madam. I am told you are quick of eye, good with letters, and know a little chemistry. Would you agree this is so, young master? I... I suppose I would, sir. <laughs> Very good. You see, our imperial charge, handed from the great imperial capital of Clementine itself, is the care, maintenance, and clear passage of one of our most imperial high roads, the Conduit of Vermus, which follows its course from Winter's Mill through the Ikomia and continues eastward to the far-famed Worms. I have come to offer you the employment of a lifetime. I am pleased to say that this good lady, Madame Opera, agrees you'd be perfect for the job. We want you to work the lamps with us and tread the path of this great highway to keep it safe for all happy travelers. In short, young Master Rosamond, we would like you to become a lamplighter.